Hello everybody, so this morning I was reading my Bible and um, the Lord took me to Revelation 21 and so um, I feel led to do a series now on the Marine Kingdom. Like I said, I always pray about my assignments and I always want to be led by the Holy Spirit with regards to what the children of God need to know now, what's what's the best thing for me to share now. So this is what's come up, the Marine Kingdom. Um, this is an introduction and I suspect that it's going to be a series because it's a massive topic. Right. So like I mentioned, it's an introduction. Um, expect to see quite a lot. Pray about the Holy Spirit giving you wisdom and insight as you go through the series. Because um, it will be precept on precept, layer upon layer, line upon line. Um, you'll see quite a lot um, coming from my presentations. So uh, click the notification bell to uh, be alerted when I do put out videos um, as the Lord leads me. Now with regards to the Marine Kingdom, it is something that is quite violent, dangerous, um, powerful. It's a very powerful, powerful kingdom. Do not underestimate the Marine Kingdom. These pictures portray um, the Marine Kingdom beautifully. I have watched Siren the series, which is the, on the left hand side. Um, I have not watched the one on the right hand side where the mermaid looks demon possessed with her eyes blacked out. And it's an actual, it's an accurate rep representation of them. They are uh, very heavily uh, possessed entities so it's a very violent kingdom it's a kingdom that um, a lot of God's children are destroyed because of lack of knowledge right the reason why is because a lot of God's children think that it's innocent fun because it has been portrayed as innocent fun by Disney now just to bring your attention to the fact that Behind Ariel there is a palace, a castle in the sea, which shows you that it is a kingdom. It's got a castle, it's got a kingdom, it's a kingdom, right? And um, they've recently made a new little mermaid. Um, you've got the white version and you've got the brown version because... Um, the Liberals want to be politically correct, so they're going to make a version for every creed, colour and uh, nation under the sun. So there you have it. Um, but it, my point is that it's not innocent fun. It is, when you're watching these videos and when you're learning, remember that it is a violent kingdom. It is a powerful kingdom. It is something not to be taken lightly or um, misused or abused it's something that should be taken very seriously right so I'm going to start off the series by talking about Jesus because Jesus Christ is my everything and it's always a good place to start with our master so I love, love, love the conversation that um, Jesus was having with the uh, Pilate, Pontius Pilate, uh, just before he was about to get crucified. And basically Jesus was explaining that his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is in another place. Because if he, if the earth was his kingdom, then what the Jews were doing to him wouldn't have happened. Um, so Pilate, you know, is still trying to understand and he's not really getting it and he asks, so you are a king? And um, Jesus says, you say that I am king. In fact, the reason I was born was to come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And then I love how he retorts um, and he asks, what is veritas? What is truth? 
right? He's staring truth in the face and he can't even see truth. It's such a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant part of scripture. Anyway, why I'm highlighting this is because I want to demonstrate that Jesus governs a kingdom, right? And when we're talking about the marine kingdom, you have to understand that it's kingdom versus kingdom. These are spiritual things that you can only discern with spiritual eyes. And just as Pilate couldn't see the truth, some people might not grasp this or see the truth or the relevance. They might think it's just fun. It's just a fable. It's just something made up, right? I will discuss the origins of the story of Little Mermaid in a different presentation, which is fascinating. But today I'd like to share what the Holy Spirit was showing me in my Bible study as I was praying with him this morning. So basically, all my teachings are Bible based. I would always encourage you to not swallow what I say, hook, line and sinker, test it. Test what I say with scripture. Go back to your Bible, dig, ask questions and make sure you test the spirits, right? Because that is what we're told as um, believers. Don't just swallow everything and believe everything. You need to test it. So my teachings I try to make as Bible based as possible. So there's three areas as a foundation, as an introduction to the marine kingdom. There's three areas that the Bible mentions water in. And these areas are all very critical to understand the um, the baseline, if you like, or the foundation of the marine kingdom. So the first we see that uh, in Genesis 1, there is a mention of God creating the earth and the spirit hovers over the waters. So there you see there's water there. So... It's existing before even the Garden of Eden. It's existing before Adam and Eve. The water over the earth was there. Um, I'll read each verse one by one directly from the Bible so you can see what I'm saying. But this is just an overview. The second verse or chapter that the Bible mentions water in is the flood. And this is was where Noah was instructed to make an ark, gather the animals and um, get ready because God was going to flood the earth because it was so full of um, violence. It was full of hybridization. It was full of mixing of angels and humans. It was filled with... Um, Transhumans, which, which is what you're seeing now, you know, a mixing, um, a morphing of things. It was filled with violence. The Bible places emphasis on the violence part of it in this um, area of scripture. So, like I said, there's three areas. We've mentioned the first two. And then the third place is where the Holy Spirit led me today in Revelation uh, 21 and basically Revelation 21 is speaking about the new earth and how there will be no sea in the new earth. Isn't that fascinating? The sea will no longer exist in the new earth. So it was there in the beginning. We see that the flood came to destroy the earth, to remove the wickedness and then in the end, in Revelation, there'll be no sea. And in each instance, I want you to realise that the Bible is hinting and making reference to a kingdom that exists. A kingdom that exists, right? Good. So let's look at Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was, was formless and empty and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord hovered over what? It hovered over the waters. So we see that this is an ancient kingdom. It existed right at the start, right over the waters. 
Now this is from Genesis 6 um, and I'm going to summarise it. You can pause the video or read your Bible, reference it from your own Bible. Genesis 6 talks about the flood and it talks about how angels came down and had relations with women which means they had intercourse or sex with women and then they made um, men of renown which are gods or gods with a small g um, and God saw this and he wasn't very pleased and he decided to wipe um, this behaviour and these um, hybrids, these giants, these uh, men of renown, these um, crossing of DNA where you have, because what a mermaid is, is a mix of human and fish, so it's a hybrid. So the flood is describing a period on the earth where there was all this um, debauchery happening and it was polluting the human DNA and if it had carried on we wouldn't have had Jesus come through Abraham's bloodline because of the complete hybridization of DNA. So God flooded the earth to remove that. But the spirits that inhabited all the men and women on earth, they didn't just disappear. They went back into the water where they originally came from. So... One of the men of renown, which I'd like to highlight, um, is Mammon. And I discuss Mammon in my previous video on um, covenants, um, why a financial covenant is important. And basically, as you can see, again, it's a hybridised um, god, Mammon. And he is the god of riches, right? Um, and he is the god of coins, which is money. Um, so I just wanted you to point that out because I'm going to link it to something else right now. And we know that Jesus got his taxes for Caesar, ran down to Caesar, what belongs to Caesar, from a mouth of a fish. So Mammon is the god of money right uh, which is the god of coins the coin was housed in the fish right and the fish god is Dagon so I'm just showing you that it is all linked it's all part of the same kingdom Dagon and Mammon are part of the same kingdom the fish and the coin are linking the two symbols together they're linking the two things and saying these are symbolic of the same kingdom. Does that make sense? So Dagon is a god mentioned in the Old Testament. It is a god that the Philistines worshipped. And as you can see, he is a fish god. He's got scales. He looks like a fish, another hybrid type being. Uh, there you see what he looked like when he was worshipped um, by the Philistines. He is half human, half fish. Again, a type of hybrid. Now I'd like to point out that some churches worship money and therefore you need to be careful who you're covenanting with when you are giving people donations because they might be worshipping a god that is not Jesus Christ of Nazareth who was born of a virgin came to set us free died and rose again and his blood um, is the sacrifice of sin there's some people who do not worship Jesus they worship a they're pretending to worship Jesus but in actual fact they're worshipping um money so here this insert from wikipedia describes dagon and i want you to see that it says here it is the god of prosperity which is the god of mammon which is the god of money so again 
is all from the same kingdom. Dagon was a fish god, and that's why you'll notice some churches have the symbol of the fish. Here you'll see that the Roman Catholic Church wears the same mitre hat as the ancient priests of Dagon because they worshipped the fish. You can see that's a fish's mouth, right? So again, it's all from the same kingdom. The Bible says truth will set you free. Test what I'm saying. Take it to the Holy Spirit and pray about it. Like I said, Pilate was facing truth and he still asked, what is truth? So pray for wisdom and understanding with regards to these matters. If you have belonged to these types of churches where they worship deities that are from the marine kingdom, then you need to repent and renounce and ask God to sever those ties to that church and find a, another church that is Bible based. So I hope you can see from the three scriptures I pointed out in the beginning that these are ancient principalities coming from right at the beginning of the world where the spirit was over the waters. Um, they're normally very high ranking and by that I mean the kingdom of Satan has um, degrees of power. These principalities from the marine kingdom are some of the most powerful, if not the most powerful. You'll see that um, other gods will be mentioned in the series such as Leviathan. And Leviathan is a god that only um, Yahweh can deal with in the Bible. That's how high ranking it is. So these ancient principalities govern religions, like I pointed out, the Catholic Church, countries, regions and politics. They're, they're, they're involved with geopolitical matters. So they're not um, your everyday run-of-the-mill um, demon. These are very powerful, high-ranking demons. Like I mentioned, the army of Satan and the army of God has hierarchy. So at the bottom of the hierarchy, you might have a soldier with a grenade and he can do so much damage. And then graduating from that, you've got a cavalry of fighter jets and they can inflict a lot more damage than he can by um, their aerial advantage. And then of course you have those that are in charge of um, weapons that can destroy miles and miles and miles of land, even sometimes whole towns, cities and nations. That's how destructive they are. So there is a hierarchy. And what I'm trying to point out is that what we're dealing with here in the spiritual realm is the ones that govern and can do more damage, if that makes sense. Examples of this in today's world on a micro level, but the micro level is so pervasive, it's, it's everywhere. You'll see that one of these spirits from the marine kingdom is narcissism. I will be doing a separate presentation on that and where this deity comes from in the marine kingdom and where he sits in the picture but the bible teaches that it, in the last days people will be lovers of self and basically self-idolatry so you're having that happen with individuals on a micro level but it's pervasive and it's affecting nations countries territories regions if that makes sense you also have um lovers of money and that's an addiction to power and that's on a macro scale. So you'll notice that money and power are what 
governs most politics, uh, most people in authority, um, most people who have clout are normally in this area and they affect things on a macro scale, right? Wars between countries um, and so on and so forth. So you're looking at um, World War One, World War Two, possibly World War Three in this category, right? And it links to the god of money, you know, the god of prosperity, the god of power, all belonging to the same kingdom, the marine kingdom. So just returning back to Genesis 6, like I said, you can read it for yourself. God places emphasis on how much violence there was, because these are violent spirits, how much violence there was on the earth. And he says he'll put an end to that violence, right? Because these are violent spirits. Um, if we go back, I just want you to keep in mind that it's not a friendly kingdom these things are your adversary these things are things that you should not be inviting into your home these things are things that they operate in stealth and they destroy things they're very violent so we see that what god did for that is he sent flood waters on the earth and he drowned everything. But that does not mean that the spirits went away. The spirits inhabited the waters. They went back to water. Um, now this is what God showed me this morning. He was saying to me in Revelation 21, and then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea notice that no more marine kingdom and this is the new heaven and new earth isn't that interesting that the new earth will not have a sea so if you've learned one new thing today smash the thumbs up button and um, stay tuned for um, up and coming um, episodes in this series because it will go into depth on how it affects people personally, the marine kingdom, and how to get free, how to set yourself free. Um, I already started by speaking about financial freedom in the wealth transfer and how um, renouncing these things, these things from the marine kingdom can set your finances free. So it's not just finances, there's so many facets to this that the children of God will need to learn about in order to combat the kingdom more effectively because remember we belong to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So I pray this has blessed you. Shabbat Shalom.